Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java Servlet and JSP series. This time I'm going to show you how to use initialization parameters within your applications. All right, so we're almost ready to do our first project, but before we do that, we're going to learn how to do initialization parameters, and we're also going to learn how to do custom error pages, but that'll be next episode, okay? So what this will allow us to do is have special parameters set within the uh, web.xml file or within a servlet, and those parameters will only be accessible through that um, through that servlet, or you'll see. So, okay, there's two types of initialization parameters, okay? There is uh, context parameters, so that means that it's available to every single servlet in your application, and then you have servlet parameters, so they're specific to a specific servlet, right? So only that servlet can uh, access this, the initialization parameter, okay? So let me first show you how to do a context parameter. So let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. And so we're going to do context parameter. This is within the web.xml file, right? We've uh, seen this a little bit before. And what you want to do is give a name to your context parameter. And what this is for is uh, think about any situation where you need to have a specific value um, available to every part of your application. And then if you ever want that value to change, you can just simply go to the web.xml file and change it without having to change it in every single servlet, right? You can, uh, you only have to change it within here, right? Uh, so it's like a central place for storing values that you need to access in other places of your application. Um, you can think of it as some sort of like global variable in a way. And yeah, so you can literally store whatever you want. It's just a key value type thing. So it stores a string value of whatever you want to store. So first we get, we need to give it a name, right? So let's just uh, make something up like authorization, authorization token. So that's our name, parameter name, and then parameter value is going to be what you're storing in that location or in that name rather. So what are we going to store in that name? Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're just going to do one, two, three, four swag. That's going to be our value for our authorization token. And so again, this is a context parameter. So it's available to all uh, servlets within the application. It's available in the context, which is um, something that every servlet has access to. Okay. So we're going to create a servlet here now, and we're going to try accessing it. So create servlet, and we're going to call this, uh, I guess we'll just call this context servlet. Of course, it never really matters what you call it. I mean, it does when, it, when you're developing like a real application, it's important to give things uh, like fitting names and stuff. But in this case, of course, we're just showing you an example. So anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. So click OK. And then let's give our servlet a URL pattern to map it to. So URL pattern. And we'll call this, uh, again, it doesn't matter. So we're going to call this uh, test. So test, actually we'll just call it token. So whenever you go to slash token, it's going to access the authorization token from the context and try printing it to the console, okay? So web.xml right here is where we have our context parameter, the authorization token. So now it's out of here, let's try accessing it, right? So since, since it's a context parameter, we can access it from the servlet context. So if you remember, every servlet has access to uh, get servlet context and uh, a few others like get servlet config, which I'll show you in a second. So get servlet context dot get init parameter, and then you just gotta pass the name of the initialization parameter, which in this case is authorization token. So we're gonna put that authorization token, and what that is gonna do is try finding that token within the web.xml or wherever it's stored, and then if it finds it, it's gonna return it as a string, otherwise it'll return null if it does not exist. So it's very similar to a regular parameter that we've seen so far. So we'll store this right here, so string token is equal to get serve like context dot get init parameter dot I mean then uh, authorization token as the parameter okay so um, if token is not equal to null meaning that it was found successfully then we'll just print it out so authorization off token and then token so a simple demonstration of being able to get it so let's uh I think that's all we need we just need to set up the Tomcat server real quick okay so this is our index, of course there's no page for that, so we'll go to slash token now, so slash token, and we can see that nothing appears on the screen, but if we go to our console here, it says auth token 1234 swag, which is exactly the uh, authorization token that we set for the context parameter and uh, inside of the web.xml. So yeah, that's it, there you go, that's how you access a, well that's how you set a context parameter, then access the context parameter in a servlet. And then don't forget that a context parameter can be accessed within any servlet, regardless of the servlet because it's available in the context, okay? So now let's show you another way of setting a parameter, another type of parameter. This is gonna be a 
uh, servlet uh, in its parameter. So it's specific to a specific servlet, um, basically. So let's go to, well, we're going to need a new servlet. So new, create new servlet. And we'll call this servlet, doesn't matter. And uh, make sure you uncheck create uh, Java EE6 annotated class, because for this, we're going to need to use the web.xml to register the servlet. So click OK. And so now we have a servlet here, and then it generated a servlet uh, thingy here. So it just needs a mapping now. So to make a mapping, if you remember, we need to go to uh, servlet mapping, then provide the name of the servlet, then provide the mapping itself. So we'll do slash hello. So now the servlet that we just created called servlet is now mapped to the slash hello route. Okay, so pretty simple stuff. We've already learned that so far. And now what I want to do is create a um, init parameter for the servlet. So only the servlet will be able to access this initialization parameter. So inside of servlet, we'll do init dash parameter or param. And then now we got to give it a name just like we did up here. So inside of here, we'll give it a name. So we'll call this the, uh, again, it doesn't matter what you call it. You can store whatever you want. So copyright year. So if you remember, uh, usually on the bottom of a page on the footer, it says the year of the copyright, like uh, Cody Simpson, uh, Cody Simpson's Dollhouse 2020, something like that, right? What the hell? So this will be that we can imagine. So 2020, oops, so I'll click enter in the 2020, there we go. And then that um, can be accessed within the servlet. So let's try that out. So let's go to servlet and inside of here, it's very similar to what we just did in the other servlet, but it's a little different. So instead of accessing the servlet context, which means that we're accessing the context available to all servlets, we're going to be accessing the servlet config, which is going to grab the, so then we can do get init parameter, which is going to grab the initialization parameter available to that specific servlet. So in this case, what we called it was copyright year. So we're going to do copyright year. And just like the other one, if that does not exist, then it's going to return null. But if it does exist, then it returns a string of what the value is at that location. Okay, so we'll do string copyright year is equal to get server like config dot get in the parameter copyright year. So the only difference you got to really remember is that you need to use the server like config rather than the context to access it. That's how you do that. Okay, and uh, so like we did last time, we'll just check to see if it's not null before we print it out, so we don't get any exceptions. So system dot out dot print line copyright year. There we go. And now let's try that out. So it's going to be mapped to the slash hello route, remember? Okay, so let's go to slash hello. So hello, and then nothing appears on the screen. But if we go to the console again, it says 2020, which is exactly what we want because uh, this is trying to access the initialization parameter from the servlet, which is specified within the web.xml file, and it's able to grab it and then print it out. So pretty simple stuff, right? And that's really it. That's the two types of initialization parameters I'm going to show you today. But there's actually one more thing I'm going to show you. Um, if you remember, we can use annotations to specify a servlet. So you can actually use annotations to set the initialization for a servlet too, which is kind of cool. So let's try that out. Let me make another servlet here called uh, servlet2. So servlet2. And then make sure this is checked. Create Java EE6 annotated class. <clears throat> so it's going to create the annotation at the top for us like normal. So we just got to give this a mapping. So URL patterns and we'll say slash hello to since the last one was slash hello. And now inside of here, we can give it if we do control P, there's a bunch of different things we can set, but we can give it an initialization parameters here. And it wants a web init parameter. So let's try that out. So init params and inside of the curly brackets here, it wants a web init param. So how do we do that? So web init params, there we go. And if we do if we do control P again, it has these three things here. So we have name, value, and description. So we only need the name of the value because that's what, you know, that's the key value thing that we're trying to set for the initialization parameter. So let's say we're trying to set the same thing we set for the last one, a copyright year. So let's try that. So name, name is equal to copyright year. So that's going to be the name of it, obviously. And then the value at that location is going to be uh, 2019. So we're going to make it different just so that we can, uh, we know it's not grabbing the other one, it's actually grabbing this one, right? So yeah, that's the, that's gonna be our initialization parameter, uh, web init parameter name, copyright year, and then value 2019. And it's it's an array, this is an array, if you do control Q, it's a web init uh, param array. So we can actually add more if we want to, so uh, comma, and then you can add more. I think that's how that should work, right? 
That should be valid. So if you want to add more, you can add more. So do that if you want to. So anyway, let's go back to here and copy this code so that we can just test it out real quick. So what we're doing here is just getting the server like config, init parameter, grabbing the copyright year, which is the same name that we just set up here. And there we go. So it should be the exact same. So instead of hello, we're doing hello too, by the way. So let's try this out. Okie dokie, so let's try it out. So slash hello too. And nothing happens on the screen, but if you look in the console, it says 2019. So perfect. It's able to access the servlet uh, initialization parameter and then print it out. So pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to show you for today. So just to recap, um, this is how you set a context parameter inside of the web.xml. You do context dash param and then set the name and the value. And then we can also do uh, initialization parameter specific to a servlet. So inside of the servlet, you just do init parameter and then parameter name, parameter value and then make sure the server has a mapping like usual, of course. And then finally, if you're like me, you don't like using the web.xml stuff, you can do annotations to set the parameters. So all you gotta do is do init parameters or init params and then equal to a web init param and then set the name and the value. So it's all very simple. And then further, the distinction is that whenever you're doing context parameters, you could do a get servlet context but if you're doing a servlet specific initialization parameter, then you do a servlet config, okay? So that's it. So thanks for watching that. And uh, next episode, like I said, we're going to be learning how to do custom error pages and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. And then we'll, making, we'll be making a project, which is going to be pretty cool. So you can test out all your new skills. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to see the code for this episode, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. And then bookmark it for future use in case you want to come back to view the concepts and their explanations in code format. And then also, if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video, and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents, $5, or $10 a month. And you get really cool perks like special ranks on my Discord server like you see here for YouTube members or Twitch subscribers. And you also get early access to all of my videos, and you get to see um, your name on the screen like you do see right now. So you can, you can be up there too if you want to, okay? And uh, yeah, that's about it. Also, one more thing is if you want to join my Discord server, if you're, if you're not in there already, then you can do that by clicking the Discord link below. So make sure you join that and hang out with us, okay? So you can ask questions too if you need help and anything like that. Get some new friends or whatever, okay? And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good night. See you later and peace.